Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Ryan Keyes, and I'm the host of Spirituality with a Spin. If you've wandered onto my show, you are in search of something deeper. You're not willing to take the explanations you've been given. You are an esoteric explorer, pulling the veil aside, looking for the solution that has eluded you. We are coming together and asking questions. We're all messengers. We all can hear the same source. The divine doesn't just pick and choose who's going to hear. I hear the same thing that you can hear. All you need to do is open your mind and open your heart. We've been talking about twin flames, soulmates, life partners. In particular, we've been talking about running and chasing what a torrid topsy-turvy ordeal I did get a request to do an episode on soul braids and I'll be working on that for next week I appreciate the request I love that you guys are getting involved and you are expanding the story. You are allowing your experiences to become part of this. Because no one owns this. This is about all of us waking up, listening to a higher power, emulating that power, and applying it so that we might reduce our own karmic overprint. So what is karma? It's been around a long time, that word. It means deed or work. It's about being energy conscious. One of the hermetic laws, based on cause and effect. Action results with reaction. You reap what you sow. And if I plant pumpkins, I'm not going to get corn. If I plant a lot of corn and expect pumpkins, I'm not going to get pumpkins. Wayne Dyer said something that was really, really uh, ingenious. How people treat you is their karma, but how you react is yours. Our deeds travel with us. What we've been through opens up the doors of what we'll go through. So the law of karma is an expression and reflection of the unity of how you've lived your life. Of a seed, like planting this soulmate seed. So part of this responsibility when you start to experience the twin flame phenomenon is part of your karma. Now, that puts a new spin on it. So if I'm being left and my runner is running or I'm in a place of separation and there's emptiness, what about my karma is creating this. George Eliot said, our deeds still travel far with us from afar, and what we have been makes us what we are. Being aware of this law and how it operates gives us a lot more power in a soulmate relationship to prepare for the twin flame. Here's a couple different 
ideas that we should start understanding. Because there are wonderful, wonderful ideas out there. But an idea is only a concept to show you how to create. Unless you pull that idea out of the ether and plant it deep within the soil of your soul, you're not going to grow. You're not going to harvest. It's like when people order gym equipment around Christmas and it sits in the garage or in their office. We all have it. We've all purchased some type of exercise equipment that became a coat hanging rack or a place that gathered dust. We've all joined a gym with the best intention and never gone. Why? We know what's best for us. We know what's right for us. We know what will provide us with the ammunition to prevail. You will never get to your destination if you don't get in the car and drive. Yet, ignoring it, running from it, sleeping during life is something that all of us are guilty of. So when you are learning about this twin flame phenomenon, this chasing, this loving, this momentum, these stages, the fairy tale, the falling in love, the yearning for the one, the turmoil, the purging, the back and forth, then the fleeing, and then this overwhelming amount of dissolution and soul cord cutting and surrendering to become one at the end. Well, now, are these things that could have been done quicker, easier, with less conflict? Are we allowing the truth and the light and the authentic self to push through these barriers so that we might gain the success necessary to see this through? Or is it the process where the work is being done, is this a karmic process, a pulling of weeds in our garden? Are we over-rationalizing the pain of the twin flame and replacing pain of the past in this situation? Because is the person you love running or are they just afraid to love? Because when you have someone come towards you, and this is a little foundation about running and chasing, when someone comes into your life, they are an instrument. They are a guitar. They can play a song that is soothing and soul-grounded. Or they can be off key and play a song with that guitar that makes you cringe. Or they can pay, play a song that will bring tears to your eyes. But it is the same guitar playing different songs that affect you in different ways. You see, just like the body holds on to a scar from an accident, so does the body hold on to how it responds to stimulus. So part of this running and chasing needs to be about becoming aware of your physical response system, your body. Is your body working for you or against you? For example, if I've given my help as a gift, even to you all, and then you were to tell me, you don't need it. But yet my intention and my 
blessing flows because I am giving this gift. And if I care about you, and if I'm doing this out of love, that becomes my blessing as well. So by countering that and not allowing it because of whatever is in your life, you're limiting my blessing. So we need to start reconditioning the physicality of our body, the physical reaction, the cause and effect of our body's karma. Yes, we hold on to scars. Yes, we experience disease. Why? Because the body is one tough, tough machine. It doesn't forget very easily. And it wants to survive. When I had my near-death experience, my body wanted to live. My soul wanted to go forward. Coming back into the body was painful and quite shocking. Now, through the course of that, my body heightened my senses of sight, sound, smell, perception, which sometimes I believe is also a little bit of a misnomer when it comes to PTSD, because you're experiencing the body's reactionary results from a karmic incident where it's trying to live. So when you throw in this karmic oneness, this external soul braid, this soul energy from the one, your body sees this as a threat. Your body sees this as a stop sign. Because the closer you get to source, the closer you get to your true soulmate, to your true message, to divinity, the more your body becomes scared. Because your body is afraid that by you assimilating and awakening and ascending, you no longer need it. You'll no longer need your body to protect you because your heart and your soul is so living in that moment of grace, protection isn't necessary. And these are just things that I'm throwing out there. It's, it's up for interpretation. All I'm doing is sitting here just like you, asking questions, wondering why. How do we get past this to a oneness? How do we go from finding this love, this energetic point, this place, to repelling it and to running, to destroying it, to sabotaging it subconsciously, to sever those ties? When Source has given you this marvelous gift of in, incarnating in this lifetime and, and coming together, well, if you feel that fear has grabbed you, that's why you need to do some soul work, some meditation, some prayer, some energy work to cut these ties. The body has control over you like a little puppet and recognize that the body is just an instrument that the soul and the mind are governing this symbiotic piece of flesh. This vessel, this car that you just got into. You are the driver. That moment that you start to cry or your belly starts to ache. Understand, it's the same thing. You can be experiencing such a high level of happiness that you cry. You can experience such a high level of anger you laugh. Balance. It's about inner peace and balance. So you are in hot pursuit. You've been swept off your feet and you are convinced that this is the love of your life. You're reassured by romantic promises and being open and willing and expecting the same. And then the tables are turned. You suddenly feel empowered but powerless. The body doesn't understand this unique emotion because it's deeper than just the flesh. It's not just the animal trying to reproduce. Ah, so different emotions raise up and rise up. You need to look for the sweet spot 
instead of a panic button. There's a delicious place in the beginning of every relationship where you're so enthralled that the chase is about an awakening and an understanding and a fantasy phase of flowing into this other person where one brief conversation leads into two hours where one date will turn into two years. At that stage, you are both happy. There's no pressure. There's no shift. You're in that sweet spot because you have completed, you have won, you have become an essence, a force, a dance. But then when deeper commitment starts to come on, and in the soul relationship, in the twin flame phenomenon, this can happen extremely early on, within weeks of meeting. The panic button is pushed. The, wait, wait, whoa. I don't know, I feel pressure. Maybe this isn't right. Maybe I'm being suffocated. Maybe I should pull away. And then the act of pulling away confuses your partner. So then they push their panic button. And then this dynamic dissolves. It goes from being wonder and magic to a void, exercise, minimize. It goes from being ethereal to animal behavior. Then it becomes a little phobic. And then one of you begins to look for escape tactics. Now, let me ask you a couple questions. You can sense the pulling away and the resisting of connection, even in a text, right? When you receive a mixed message, is it really mixed? No, it's a cry for help. It's an opportunity to address. Are you truly listening? When they exclude you and don't contact you for out of the norm, let's say you talk to each other via text or whatever it is daily, and then there's nothing for a whole day. That avoidance has serious impact. It weighs on your life. It is like a dam in a river. It's holding back the flow of soul. So as you go through and do these things, if you are the one doing them, you need to ask why because of this person. What are you identifying? What are you cataloging? What are you putting into this chronological order of flesh? Because at some point you need to look past the body into the soul and understand that you have become part of an amazing alchemy of the heart. And that this is about a higher love. You know, Satchel Paige said, love like you've never been hurt and dance like nobody's watching. Have you been hurt? I have. I've been decimated. I've been left in a pool of my own tears not knowing which way was up. Then you can go through a dance of decimation where it's a push and pull. Is this on purpose? No. But it, will it be perceived to be? Yes. So every step that we make in this phenomenon, we have to understand whether you are listening to this and you are a runner or a chaser, what you put out there is going to come back. What you plant, you're going to reap. Khalil Gibran wrote about pain. He said, your pain is breaking the shell that encloses your understanding. If you gave so much of your heart, if you've given so much of what is going on in your mind and your body, and you feel this connection. Why would you cut it off? Why would you step away? 
Well, there's only one true reason. There's only one true reason why you would run from oneness, right? That reason has everything to do with you. It has everything to do with why are you running? Because all of us hate the idea that we're going to fall in love and we're going to give this piece of ourself and the other person is going to take it, use it, feel it, and then bruise it. The question that I've been getting a lot is, why can't the runner see how good they have it? Why can't this person see that I love them beyond anything? Why can't this person see me? We could sit down and talk for days, but why does the runner become the runner? And what can you do about it? Well, the first advice is to stop chasing the runner. And this is going to be painful. It's going to hurt. It's going against what you feel because you're feeling with your body instead of your soul. You're bringing the body to a soul party. Your body is aching. It's fiending for its drug. And you run towards it just like it's going to give you that high. But this inter action is higher than a fleshly level. It's a soul level. So I would say, and it's up to you because I'm not dictating your life. I'm providing an opinion, an open forum, and an alternative. But my advice is to stop chasing the runner. Stop trying to give them an answer and a reason to run because they're going to run further because in their mind the twin flame runner is terrified of coming true coming clean waking up their body doesn't want to lose control their body doesn't want to give up and there's a lot of body work that needs to be done in those people there's a lot of body work that needs to be done in the chaser and when I say body work I'm talking about encapsulated closed off places of energetic emotion that has trapped itself and is manifesting as fatigue and disease and frustration. You got to open those uh, gates, those floodgates, so that you can find peace. Afraid and terrified of everything, the runner doesn't even give you a chance, doesn't, only gives you a taste and moves forward. Because some people live so deeply in fear, you can almost feel this terrifying event happening and unfolding like you're watching a horror film. But unfortunately, instead of stepping up to the plate and dealing with the problem, they tune out. They go back to that old TV show where they perceive the problem and not the solution. They panic. They think that you've forgotten about what they are. They're able to ignore you and put the blame on you. So a large part of them fears that you wouldn't be able to love them if you knew what they were really like. Or if they loved you, it would be too vulnerable of a situation. So the easiest way to handle the situation is to alleviate the situation. Instead of them viewing you as a sinking ship and going down with it, they view you as a plane that is going to crash so they will jump out of it with a parachute, seeking an escape. It is unfortunate because for the twin or the soul, to wake up. A lot of times that change, which I've been talking about incorporating in your life daily, something different, small, so that that change doesn't become the chaos that has to create something new. But many times it is that chaos, that catalyst, 
the fuse gets lit and then boom change it's soul crushing yes it is it is devastating it's awakening as well and what happens when you realize that your twin is running you want to run after them but as we all know if you've had a pet go ahead and chase it oh it starts out as a game then it becomes fear and you're not going to catch that little thing till it's tired and by that time you're so tired and frustrated that do you, you don't even really want to catch it right yeah but guess what guess who has the power in this Outside of Source, of course, the Source has the ultimate power, our Creator, our Divine Source. But the Chaser holds the power in the Twin Flame relationship. Now, this is conceiving that you're not dealing with a Faux Flame or a Fling or a Karmic Twin. And this also is provided that you have shown the correct love. You've done the correct things through the course of this relationship and someone isn't actually running because of feeling afraid to love. They're running for fear of something that you've done. These are scenarios based on actual coming together an actual equality of love in a congruent relationship that doesn't involve violence and any type of coercion. I'm not talking about you dated the wrong guy or fell in love with the wrong guy. We all hear those stories about where someone was a pen pal to someone in prison and when they got out. Wow. I'm not talking about dysfunction. I'm talking about something that's actually working. I'm talking about you giving them right amount of respect and love and progressing through the natural stages of loving. And then all of a sudden, out of the blue, boom, they run. Let's get that clear. Abusive relationships are never something that I believe is coming towards you for as a twin experience. This is a karmic experience. This is an experience that I believe you are preparing yourself to heal old wounds so that you can move on to a twin. Uh, abuse and all of these things do not ring true with me with love. So if you're contacting me and you want to talk about that you were in an abusive twin flame relationship... I'm immediately not going to resonate with that um, because that's my own personal belief. You can believe what you like, but I have a hard time believing that Source is putting out a conscious call to people that are being abusive or in an abusive situation. That is a karmic call. And I feel that will help to alleviate anything you're feeling right now. If you're in that situation, recognize that. Recognize that you've been sitting in a place of self-torture and that you need to do some internal work. Yes, your heart will be devastated. Yes, your soul will ache. Yes, you will feel left. You will feel like the abandoned person at the train station waiting for the love of your life to show up and they never do. It'll be a notebook moment. But it will not be. Arms flailing punching and those things okay just so we have that clear but the chaser has the power and it's opposite to what everybody thinks I believe because if you think that a runner is going to stop running because you're chasing it's not going to happen the more you chase the more you push the more you push the more they feel threatened the more you're raising that instinct to run so, you have to stop running and love them from a bit of a distance. Look towards your inner self. Pull back. Allow them to think about these things. Allow them to miss you. Allow them to understand their own life. Because these are levels of loving not everybody's going to love on the same level all at once. We each open up at different times, like flowers, right? There's a season that 
one flower blooms, there's another season and another flower blooms. So perhaps we are also seasonal. We have moments where we're more receptive and then moments where we're not. And if you're chasing me and I'm not in a receptive moment, I'm going to feel pressured. That's just a natural instinct. So we will continue this runner chaser dynamic. We are investigating this full force. <laughs> this almost makes me want to run. <laughs> Just understand from the bottom of all of this that if you strive for energetic balance and realize that much of this is about internal work, that a label like a chaser gets tied up with judgment and shame and guilt and that you are oppressing and pressuring and that you're, you're relentlessly trying to procreate this love feeling into the world. And then the label of being a runner makes you feel limited and dark and hurtful. Don't get caught up in the labels. <clears throat> Let's look for the authenticity. Let's look for energetic, constant manifesting. Everything out of love. I appreciate your time. Peace, light, and love. And I will see you on the other side. Thank you.